Ambition is what they have, and glam came with the package. With blue seas and sandy beaches as the backdrop, these girls take no days off. A pretty face may get them to the door, but the determination to win gets them in. Being a boss is never easy, and their climb to the top comes with drama. Designer lifestyles make it hard to be lazy. No one wants to be the last season's best. Getting the look may cost you, but ambition is always priceless. It's called the ambition. ambition. My name is Bianca, and I'm glam ambitious because I don't really give a fuck what people think about me. Most people know me because my start was on Top Model. Tyra Banks recruited me when I was 18 years old, and from then, I recruited myself to become what I am today. I've done major campaigns for Macy's, Sears, uh, Target, Apple. I've done a lot. I've done every New York Fashion Week from 18 until 23 constant grind hustle. I've been to South Africa Fashion Week, I've done LA, I've been around the world doing every fashion week, every magazine that I can. I still feel like I haven't reached my pinnacle. My family is from Turks and Caicos. I grew up in Grand Turk. My mom is from there and I go back as often as I can, sometimes two times a year. I am a Caribbean girl. I grew up there. My family's from there. I grew up with the values and the the culture. I'm coming to Trinidad to explore the fashion market. With my family having such a strong background in the West Indies, I thought that it would be a great market to explore since I've already done all the other major markets. Local models take not being paid or being paid peanuts because there are no other avenues for them. I feel bad for them, but that doesn't work for me. And money is the focus. Money is the motive. So that's not my problem and I'm not standing for it. I'm not a local. People know me, you can Google me. I party hard. I got a elite group of friends that I hang out with. Uh, we do the whole private jets, box seats everywhere, front row, court side. It's just, if you're gonna do it, do it big. I've seen some things, it's fun, it's, it's cool. Do it at a certain level, go hard. Even though I'm seeing that Trinidad is really clickish, and I'm always down with the click, I want to kind of do my own thing and be my own clip. If they want to accept me, they can. If they don't want to accept me, I'm still going to be there, so it doesn't change anything for me. Your opinion of me is not my business. In my head, I know they would want me. I mean, <laughs> I deliver. I could definitely take over this business. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to go about doing that. Leah is a model that I used to work with in South Africa, and we had so much fun when we were younger. Leah's the type of girl that you're gonna love to hate. I personally love her because she hates everything and everybody, unless she wants to like you. Leah doesn't need me, Leah doesn't need anybody. That's why I like her, she does her own thing. My name is Leah, I'm from Barbados, and most people know me as Miss Barbados World 2009. I've never been one to just do one thing. I, I just can't do that. I own the, a charity, the modeling, having a television show. I work at the door at Zen. Last April, I got an email during exams at law school asking me if I wanted to manage the Miss Barbados World franchise. I decided to take the franchise. <laughs> Who doesn't like it can lump it, like as, as we say. I've decided to focus on more of my business goals, which involves merging my legal career with my entertainment background. So now I'm building an entertainment services company. And through that, I manage the artist Nikita. We do everything for her, like what, like an international label would. We provide legal services, we develop her image building. You name it, we do it. I've been in Trinidad for about three years now, I think. It's easier for me to live in Trinidad for personal reasons. I, I, I feel like I have a, a bigger space to be myself. In Barbados, I kind of, I feel personally that I don't have that. I definitely feel like a Bajan living in Trinidad. A lot of things are still very new to me. There are a lot, a di lot of differentiations between our two cultures. Maybe I don't fit. Maybe, maybe I'm weird. The franchise where it was before to where it is now, the, it's leaks. Um, improved. We took the brand from nothing and made it into an elitist brand. That was our that was our vision and purpose when we started. We had three months to do that and we were able to do it successfully. Charmin is a is an attorney as well. And Tash, who's the media manager and the, the third person in the team, she's a PR officer at an advertising agency. We just kind of put our heads and ourselves into 
the Miss Barbers World project. And so for three months, we went nonstop. I don't think we could do that now because we all have different goals and we all have separate lives and we go in different directions. For me, it's a headache because I know that anything that goes wrong is going to be my fault. And that's a little scary for me. There will be some measure of sacrifice if I hold on to, to both things. If I hold on to the talent management as well as Miss Barbados World. But if it's going to damage it extensively, then I have to choose one or the other. There is the anvil over my head, Miss Barbados World. And then I'm now starting a new company, so I definitely have champagne taste and Moby buckets right now. Well, not Moby. Maybe some kind of juice buckets. Higher level juice. In <laughs> I'm sure that we're gonna have a bit to conquer, but so be it. I know Sarah Jane from coming in and out of the club. I work at the door at Zen, and she's a committee member. She's a socialite, so in terms of popularity, let's put it in context of high school US, <laughs> USA, she's on the cheerleaders team. She's living in a bubble, I think, but that's, that's her conditioning, that's what she's used to. I think she's a cool girl. I just see her passing and I, I don't go out of my way to get to know every single person that passes the door. Then it's kind of awkward. <laughs> In Trinidad, glamour is events, glamour is parties, glamour is that kind of flair. When you mix that with ambition, it becomes social ambition. It's also about using what Trinidad can give you to get ahead. There's one way that I fall into glambition. That would easily be it. My name is Sarah Jane. I'm an event planner. Many people in Trinidad know me because I recently went up from Miss Universe Trinidad and Tobago. I finished fourth. I guess I'm just trying to figure out how to move on from that now. I don't think people understand what goes on behind the scenes with a pageant, and they definitely don't understand what comes in the aftermath. It was kind of stressful, you know, um, just dealing with a lot of, the, all of the attention all of a sudden. I'm always surprised when people come up and they want my picture or they want to talk to me or they want to meet me. The last thing you feel to deal with is talk to a stranger for 10 minutes and, and listen to their theory about why I lost, <laughs> you know. I realized at the end of the day, this is a, a fan. You know, this is somebody who followed my journey and this is somebody who really wanted me to win. That's part of the package, you have to deal with it. I just don't think I expected that I would have to deal with it that much um, at a finalist level because I never won. <laughs> so Fantasy is now offering me a job that's basically larger than life. They want me to be the face of Carnival for Fantasy 2013 which would mean being on the cover of their magazine that they're releasing after Carnival. It would also mean having a huge section leader costume, doing a lot of model work for them, being on their brochures, etc. That alone is huge. The other thing that Fantasy offered me, which I'm also really excited about, is they want me to come on board the events team to help plan their pre-carnival fets, so like Wicked and White, Rise, stuff like that. I kind of had to stop, slow down and tell myself, actually think about if this is right for you, is this the right move for you? So I think it's about being more than just a pretty face. At the end of the day, I'm still not sure where my path is gonna take me. Before I went up from Mr. Trinan Tobago, I was also, I guess I would say more in the social sense. Um, I was probably a familiar face, so a lot of people knew me, knew of me. Trinan is small, so once you start going out and meeting people, you end up infiltrating that. And then I guess you get what Trinadians like to call a visa face. <laughs> because it's accepted everywhere. So you can go to any club and you just don't need to line up. You don't need to pay. Doesn't matter what time it is. Doesn't matter if there's a list or not. You just get a band and walk in. The thing is, you can go out in Trinidad and come home at midnight and not go hard, or you could be like us and... <laughs>
Since the show, so many options have come to me and I just want to make sure I take the right steps. Laurie is my home girl. <laughs> Love Laurie till I dead. Pretty much she and I can just have the best time, whatever we're doing, wherever we are, liming with whoever. And I love that I can bring Laurie around and she will just take things from here to here. Whether it's the energy level or the inappropriateness level. My name is Laurie Antoinette. I am the designer for Hackwai. I don't think of myself as a designer. I say designer so people could understand what I do, but I really think of myself as an artist, full stop. I started sewing and making stuff for myself and my best friend and my cousin to wear to go buju concert and party. And then people start saying, hey, I like your pants and hey, I like your top. I officially launched Hackwai in December 2010 and played with other names. Like, I didn't want to use my own name because somebody's saying, oh, I'm wearing a Laurie Anthony and it's just fine, so stupid. So, you know, give them something else to focus on because I'm not selling myself. And turn into a, a field with people who have money and, and come from a certain clique wasn't, that wasn't even a thought in my head. It's just, I want to do this, I'm going to do this, full stop. People say, oh, I should ask this question and that question. I've had one or two designers said, you know, if you need any advice, I did go once and I received no advice. So I just don't see the need in asking anybody for advice no more. At the end of the day, your work is supposed to speak for itself. And when you work, when you actually put any time and your work speaks for itself, I want to succeed on my own merit. So I don't need to kiss any ass. Which is basically what the half white woman is, the woman who just honest. I do see myself as the dark horse in ways because everybody else is either E, an established designer, B, jumping out to fashion school and, you know, mommy, daddy, or whatever, however they get in it. C, have some big designer back in them. I'm not doing things traditionally, but that's, that's what kind of fuels me too, because I like, I have my f***ing little group, so I don't really matter. I don't like stupid people. I don't like fake people. I mean, everybody see that, but I really don't f***ing like fake people. They'll come and smile up in my face when I could see that she's thinking something else, like so it just come straight. Because people are going to come and say, oh, it was lovely and it was great, and that's just bull****, because not everybody's going to like my stuff. When I see you wear my stuff, then I will know that you really liked it. My biggest problem getting Hackwai out is me, money, management. <laughs> so what else? I want to do everything in a particular way. I call it my yellow brick road to get to us. Meeting set up already. Um, in my head, I already did the timeline of who's who, who I have to meet, um, what I have to get in order to meet with these people. So far, Hackwai has not been my bread and butter. Hackwai has been love and love of creating. I want to marry the two. I want to marry the love of creating with the money. And I think I'm, I'm ready to do that. I'm ready for it to work. I think Aqua is ready to be on somebody else besides me. It's so cute. The chef for an auntie. She rev. Some people, you could, you could handle them. Some people, you just had to be in a particular mood to be able to handle them. And she, if she ever explodes, I hope I'm in the right mood to be able to deal with it. I never thought that this would be my life, but all I think about is ice cream. My name is Isake Edwards, and um, glambition to me means striving for excellence, be it work, be it how we get dressed in the morning, your relationships, you know, just doing everything the best of your ability, just always being on point. I went to Howard University, studied fine arts, that is my life's ambition, but I kind of owe my life to my dad and his efforts to always make sure that I'm comfortable and happy. He's been in the homemade ice cream business for 31 years. He has decided that he wants to retire. My dad came from nothing doesn't have a formal education. He's just one of those people that doesn't think about stuff too much. He just, he just does it, you know, he makes it happen. I'm definitely a daddy's girl. If he had any other kids, I would kill them. <laughs> he really sacrificed 
um, everything in order for me to go to the best school and live in the best environment and you know um, indulge my fancies my my habits I've been really fortunate to be able to do whatever I want to do at any moment and not have to hold on a nine-to-five or not feel any pressure to do that I knew at some point being an only child on his side that I would have to step up to the plate so who else but his one blade of grass as he puts it to take over the business I have to prove to my father that I am focused um, that I understand what it's going to take to run this business and to take it to the next level. If I can do that with myself and how I put myself together every day, I mean, and people stop me and ask me, oh, where'd you get this? Or how oh, you thought about putting that together? I can do that on a bottle or a tube or whatever the product comes in. I'm almost certain. Most people think that I'm very aggressive or, or loud. i rather be heard and in control than have somebody sit on me or have somebody speak for me. Uh, that's what I'm uncomfortable with. I'm not uncomfortable with people being jarred by my personality. Uh, like I said before, if you can't handle it, then we just can't, we can't roll. I love people. But at the same time, if you don't set boundaries for people, yeah, they walk all over you. And that's not happening on my watch. As fierce and as aggressive and as you know warrior woman like <laughs> I'm really soft when it comes to love and a man and I have to be I, I think that's only natural I think because I'm so hard in my everyday life that that is where I'm able to be soft be sucky so I usually get taken advantage of or my heart broken my last relationship was a disaster mostly because everybody and their mother had an opinion or want to tell me what to do or you shouldn't be with this person and the relationship was tragic but it didn't leave me feeling like if i didn't ever want to have a relationship ever again i'm a sucker for love so we'll see Powerful women get called bitches a lot, but I don't have a problem with that. I'll be the bitch. I'll be a rich bitch. <laughs> Glambitious to me is being yourself 100%. I don't ever want to not be myself, no matter what the setting. And I don't think I can do that. I, I don't think that I have that mechanism to not be myself. She's over assertive and she will always be on the defensive. It does not make sense having a conversation with her. I have bigger fish to fry. I don't want to sit there, you know, feeling your negative tension in my face. Ice cream and marmalade, we're not on the same level. Just like, just don't take anybody on. Don't give a damn what anybody says. Don't give a damn who's looking at you. I don't care what you do, because I do me, period, bitch. <laughs> I want Bianca to sit there looking around, cannot believe that this is in Trinidad. Small island, big club, big party, big personalities. I invest in personalities, not in bottles. She likes bottles, I like personalities. I just think people who try hard are whack. Weren't you the one that was telling me, I can party, I'm gonna keep up, it'll be so much fun. I'm tired. Uh. I don't think this is gonna end well. Business is always on my mind. I never, my mind just never stops working. I think it would be great if we could do a feature on her for the magazine, you know, okay. being a Caribbean girl. Yeah, doing yeah that would be really, so. really exciting and, and fun. Um, yes. Let's talk about it on Monday now. Yeah. She was just saying, like, you know, she's a new artist. Why would you, you know, be careful with that if you're investing so much in a new artist? I don't think it's a good idea. Keep your freaking opinion to your damn self. If Leah came in and started melting all Isaki's ice cubes, that would be a problem. The fact is, you can't get in the way of, 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 of what people say all the time. Well, this is how I do it with my homegirls in. Uh, you're not in New York, and you're not with your homegirls. So adjust your rules. You're very passive aggressive. Oh, you think so? Yes. I can be very aggressive too. So can I. Girl, please. Check my stats. The day has been so trying already, and I'm on the verge of fucking tears. I just wanna give up. Because if I up tonight on the runway and no one receives the collection well, then I fuck with Hakwai. 
And then I forgot two dresses home. I can't shoot without them. Seven pieces on your runway and you're mad. I'm last. It's a big deal to get, you know, last walk. I earned last walk and I best not f it up now. Face, seal them out. <laughs> Shit gets real in Trinidad. <laughs>